The Andromeda is one of the iconic ships of Star Citizen. It was the first flyboard size for ship and also the first ship in the Constellation line. Released in 2015, it is still one of the most used and beloved ships. But time has passed and now many size for ships are available. Is the Andromeda still keeping up? Hi, I'm Joru5. In this video I will tell you what I like, what I don't like and my final verdict on the Andromeda. This is not just an evaluation of the ship's performance. What you will get is my subjective, honest and informed opinion. You can use the chapters to navigate the video. But I hope you won't skip any parts because I have a lot to say about the Andromeda. And now things I like. Good in solo. Usually ships of this size require a minimum of crew to use most of their potential, operating turrets and stuff. The Andromeda, on the other hand, retains much of its potential even when solo. The pilot has access to four size 5 hardpoints with a large capacitor and a huge amount of missiles. For this reason, using the Andromeda feels more like using a super heavy fighter. Snub fighter. With the exception of the Taurus, all constellations have a snub fighter docked in the tail, which is at the same time one of the coolest and most rough features in all of Star Citizen. The P-52 Merlin is a lot of fun, but its uses are quite limited. It is fast, but its firepower comes from two size 1 R points and a size 2 unchangeable ballistic gatling, which has little ammunition, enough for one or two light fighters. But the real problem of the snub fighter is that if you go more than 12 kilometers away from the Andromeda, you can no longer see its location. And that's a shame, because thanks to powerful headlights, the P-52 would have made an excellent planetary reconnaissance vehicle. So today the only use for the Merlin is for the fans. But if you fight in space, you don't really need it because the Andromeda is badass and can only be defeated by jamming its quantum or hitting it with big torpedoes. Things are different in the atmosphere, where the Andro cannot move fast enough to get out of trouble. In this case, having someone in the Merlin can help blunt the boldness of faster threats. Anyway, despite the limitations, having a snub fighter is definitely cool. Jack of all trade. Without any doubt, it is the aspect of the Andromeda that players have always loved the most. Having an Andromeda means having access to many game loops. NPC bounties? No problem. With an Andromeda it is possible to destroy a hammerhead in a short time, although great care must be taken to quickly eliminate escort ships first. Ground missions? No problem. It is possible to carry ground vehicles to make reaching bunkers faster and the snub fighter can be used to speed up some cave missions. You can also trade with a carrying capacity of 96 SCU to have enough space to carry on a decent trade. Turrets The turrets of the Andromeda are located in the bridge. They are easy to reach and have excellent all-around visibility. The proximity of the two turrets, not only to the pilot but also to each other, helps coordinate targets. The turrets are armed with two size 2 weapons and powered by generous capacitors. Reminiscent of the Tanti 4 Maybe it's just me, but one of the reasons I like the Constellation Andromeda is that it reminds me of the Tanti 4 from Star Wars. First, because of the very similar aesthetics, but also because of the same role they play, the Corvette that is a fast, medium-sized gunship. Bridge. Oh yeah, this is definitely a subjective point. I love the bridge of the Andromeda. It is spacious, has three seats side by side and offers excellent visibility. And counting the turrets, the Andromeda is one of the few ships to have room for five people on the bridge. Tough. Having 20,000 HP for nose and body, a total HP of 200,000 and, on top of that, a modest damage reduction bonus, the Andromeda is one of the size 4 ships with the greatest endurance. This makes of the Andromeda a ship with a remarkable presence in battle, able to skip in time if the situation takes a turn for the worse. XL1 One thing is certain. Ships that can mount size 2 quantum drives are blessed with the ability to install the best quantum drive in the game. 
And if you think that is not because the VK00 has a higher top speed, think again, top speed is only one of many factors. Check the reported travel time, that is the figure to consider. Lots of missiles. With 24 size 2 and 28 size 1 missiles, the Andromeda has, at least on paper, the same missile power as the Freelancer Miss, which is a dedicated missile platform ship. Sure, they are small missiles, but the ones installed are not bad. The Marksman 1 are among the best size 1 infrared missiles, although I personally prefer EM missiles against small ships. The Strike Force 2 are the best size 2 cross section missiles. Usually, sure shots against medium and large ships. And now, what I don't like about the Andromeda. Jack of all trades, master of none. Like any multi-role ship, the Andromeda does not excel in the game loops it gives access to. Here's why. NPC bounties. Completing high-level bounties with the Andromeda, as with any large ship, is tedious. Most group bounties are fought in the atmosphere, where large ships are at their worst. Reaching the targets takes a long time due to low speed in the atmosphere, and it is necessary to take down from the distance the escort first, which are usually made of hurricanes in the higher level bounties. And if you fail dealing with the escort ships first, the chances of being shot down are high. Medium and light fighters are more suitable for NPC bounties. Trading Trading is easier said than done. 96 SCU of cargo sounds like a lot, but it is such a size that it becomes profitable only with valuable commodities such as the Laranite. You soon realize that it is difficult to fill an Andromeda with such valuable commodities in one stop because the availability is shared among all servers, so you are forced to make several stops, with the risk of running into a 30k error or a player that is testing his brand new Eclipse. So, when it comes to valuable commodities, it is better to use smaller, nimble cargo, which are faster to move around. An alternative profitable strategy is to use much larger cargo ships and trade low value goods with high availability. A C2 Hercules with a cargo full of scrap can earn 30,000 USC in about 10 or 15 minutes. A Caterpillar 30,000 and Andromeda full of scrap will earn just 5,000. So the cargo capacity of the Andromeda sits in an annoying middle ground. Competing with smaller cargo to grab high value commodities and being excluded from the profits of buying and selling low-value goods because of insufficient capacity. Ground missions Sure, the Andromeda can comfortably carry ground vehicles, but if your goal is to do many ground missions, then there are faster and cheaper alternatives, such as the Nomad, which can easily carry a Cyclone. After all, ground missions can be tricky, it is not uncommon to die or having players destroy your parked ship, a Nomad is much faster to claim. Locked Varipak Size 5 Due to the positioning too close to the ground, it is not possible to have fixed Size 5 weapons on the lower hard points, which is frustrating since they can be installed on the top ones. Having a mix of gimbaled and non-gimbaled weapons makes no sense to me. It's really an unfortunate oversight. Dated Look since its release in version 2.0, the Andromeda has had no significant updates. The interior looks uninspired, unrefined and full of flaws. The difference from more modern ships is demoralizing. Even the cutter packs more details into a fraction of its size. I know, the cutter is one of the last ships released, but it does not justify the poor state of the Andromeda. Fragile Turrets the turrets of the Andromeda are very exposed, and in the hardest battles it is not uncommon for one or both of them to end up badly damaged and no longer operational. Landing The Andromeda is one of the longest size 4 ships, and it takes some practice to land in the narrow vertical angles. During my early days with the Andromeda, with the cargo full of trading commodities, it happened several times to end up destroyed because of a slightly inaccurate landing. To this day, I still land the Andromeda with a certain uneasiness. Default configuration The default configuration is not bad, 
on the weapon side, but the quantum and the shield are not even close to military grade. Damn, they are not even decent. They are just among the absolute worst, which is not appropriate for a ship that is supposed to be a gunship. Locket missile racks. The Andromeda has lots of missiles, but it is limited to size 1 and size 2. Before version 317, this was not a problem because the missiles were much more powerful, but now size matters, and it would be nice to be able to mount larger missile racks. At least some size 3. Pop-up table not working. I agree that the pop-up table is not a big deal and was causing problems, but why leave it closed? Or if anything, why not just take the table sign off the floor? Every time I enter the Andromeda, I don't like to see this bitter reminder of the poor state of the ship. Oh, and table aside, this ship doesn't even have a proper toilet. I mean, it's just a shower. Final verdict. Before going any further, don't forget to like and possibly subscribe. Making these videos takes many days of work, but to show your appreciation is just a click. I will be very grateful. Now, I'm sure my rating will anger some Andromeda fans, but please listen to my reasons to the end. In its current state, my rating for the Andromeda is 5 out of 10. It is a ship that has qualities, but the whole constellation line was left behind and ended up being outpaced by modern ships. The Andromeda is a ship that meets a need of the past. Being the first playable size for ship, it had to be multi-role and among the best in every activity. But today we have many good alternatives. All the constellations need more than new graphics, they need a new purpose. They are a clear example of how inconvenient it is to release new ships without updating the older ones. I know, making new ships is an effective way to raise the funds needed to continue development and I'm fine with that, but it does not excuse the state of the Andromeda or any other constellation which is dramatic. They have not had the restyle in 7 years, even losing some features like the pop-up table. But the real problem of the Andromeda is that the Corsair exists. They are multi roles in direct competition. They do the same things and even the price in the store is almost the same. But the Corsair is a ship of the current generation. Well made, rich in detail, capable of carrying land vehicles and with enormous firepower. It does not have a snap fighter, but really no one cares about that. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of the Corsair. But I think that the coexistence of ships that are too similar to each other, especially for large ships, is a drawback to both the quality of the game and the revenue from the sales. The ideal would be that every ship, especially from size 3 on up, can offer something unique. The player must feel like buying both a Corsair and an Andromeda. But today it does not make sense to have both, especially if you already own a Corsair. My wish is for the constellation to be redesigned as soon as possible as a modular ship, as it always should have been, like a smaller galaxy. Having the current variants of the constellation line converted into models, the missile platform named after the Andromeda, the cargo module named Taurus, the luxury one named Phoenix, and the exploration one named Aquila. And in the future, even implement new modules such as the mobile medical station, the police station, ship repair and rearming, refinery, race car pit, data center, and so on. And with all the new possibilities coming to Star Citizen, this game needs a new constellation, as revolutionary as it has been in the past. In the meantime, I would like to make some suggestions to CIG to give some bite to the Andromeda with little effort. First, the Snap Fighter. It is urgent to have the ability to track the location of the main ship at any time. Then, it would be cool to have the ability to swap the Merlin with an Archimede in the Moby Glass, or at least have the Merlin rearm every time you dock with the main ship. Second, unlock the missile racks to allow the installation of at least size 3 missiles. And finally, fix the lower hardpoints to have the ability to install any fixed size 5 weapon. If these changes were already been in place, my rating would have been 7 out of 10. Or even 8 out of 10 with an aesthetic makeover, which on my scale is a terrific rating. 
but I hope more for this ship. As I said, the Andromeda is an iconic ship of Star Citizen and still one of the most beloved, respected and used. It deserves a brighter future. In the next episode, the Banu Defender. Can you guess what I like and what I don't? Until next time, see you in the verse.